I was born in High Street on January the 16th, 1919. I am now 78 years of age. Uh, I was born actually in a little small bedroom in the back of my home, the rear of the premises. At the front of the premises in High Street are two shops. At the moment one is empty and the other is the watch repairer who's been with us for 39 years. I remember quite well uh, my little bedroom at the back, which I still go in. It is now uh, a little washroom, uh, a spare room, because I'm the last of the family now. I had four brothers. Uh, my eldest was 18 years older than myself. My other brother was 12 years older. My other brother was about nine years older, and the other was five years older, and I was the baby of the family. Uh, I remember quite well my little bedroom, but it overlooked the garden at the back, and then when I grew a bit older, my mother transferred me into a bedroom overlooking High Street. It was um, very strange and different to the back, because the back of the house was rather quiet, but at the front, you could always hear quite a lot of things were going on. Brooks, the mayor of Droitwich Bar. Council. Thank you. Thank you. Nelly Copson. Now, I used to look at uh, the Reader's Digest magazine in the 1960s, and one regular feature was called My Most Unforgettable Character. Now, if I was asked to name my most unforgettable character, I'd rather think that Nelly Copson would be on the top of my list along with her brother Ron, who used to live next door to my wife and myself. As most of you know, Nelly was born in the first floor, back room of this property, now the Button Tree Cafe, and that was on January the 16th, 1919. And just to put things in perspective, you have to remember that things like the BBC transmitter at Droid, which didn't even exist, and now of course it's history and in the museum. So a lot happened during her lifetime in the world, apart from things that happened to her. She went on to have a very interesting life, as you know, and if you want to know more, please read the book. I understand the copies are on sale, and I can assure you that it is well worth every penny. Super. It's a really good read. And of course, one of the things you'll probably remember, she was the Droitwich One. And, uh, and quite interestingly, uh, my uh, younger daughter's partner comes from Italy, and his mother told us that apparently he made the newspapers in Italy. <laughs> so she definitely put Droitwich on the map. <laughs> now I'm very, very pleased, as you all know, commemorative plaques have been arranged by local people. John Cook, thank you very much. Uh, local historian Paul Jones. And Tom Limer, I understand, uh, organised fundraising to pay for the plaques. And they've been purchased with donations from drug and high street traders and residents. And I think it's absolutely fantastic in this town that yes. people come together and do things like this. I think this is what makes drug so special. In fact, I'll just remind you, those of you who weren't there, uh, we had another plaque a little while ago at the other end of the high street to commemorate the tricentenary of the turnpike. And the Lord Lieutenant, when he came and did the honours for that, he mentioned that Droit, which was quirky. Uh, if you look that up, it means unusual, but in a nice way. And I think that's absolutely true. We've got the high street here, which is quirky. And we've got the fact that people come together for a very quirky character in the nicest way, Nellie Copson. And Nellie is firmly part of our story, of our town of Droitwich. She joins a long line of notable people. We had the Romans. We had King John who sold us the Royal Charter, and of course John Corbett, the Salt King. Now as I think most of you know, John Corbett's buildings can be identified because they have a bas-relief sort of sculpture of a raven up on the top. You notice those as you go around the town. Well, I think now Nelly's birthplace will have its identity confirmed with a blue plaque, which yes. I think is rather splendid. So in a moment we're going to do the honours. 
Uh, would you like to say anything before? Well, I'd just like to say what an honour it is to be here commemorating Nell uh, and um, seeing all the great people gathered together. It's absolutely thrilling. I, I remember the funeral with all the crowds lining the streets, and it was a, a memorable occasion. I've, I've never forgotten this. Barbara, my wife, uh, was never forget Nell because uh, Nell gave her a great recipe uh, for arthritis. <laughs> and uh, it, it was rubbing whiskey into it. <laughs> well, you didn't just rub it in, you drank it as well. But, uh, <laughs> so Barbara tried that, but she died quickly after that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's great to remember them, and what a wonderful job they've made of this, this house. Uh, that, that she did. Yeah. It's super fun. Lovely to see round the back where, where, where she used to take me down and have a look at things there. Really. But uh, what a memories this house brings back to life. And uh, forevermore it'll be associated with Bell, which is absolutely marvellous. So he, we have great honour and joy, together with the mayor, in unveiling this plaque. Now I've been asked oh. that we should do a can. It's all right. Okay. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> I'll just ask if you'd all join with us in, we'll count to three, and if you have one end and I have the other, I, I, I hope this will work, we shall see. Yeah. Can we have a count to the one? one, two, three, four. And a picture there as well. A picture of Nelly Copson, <laughs> the much respected Droidfish historian was born in the first floor back room of this property on the 16th of January 1919 and lived here until she passed away in March 2011 at the age of 92. I think that was pretty good, I hope I get to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much indeed.